I want to make a fantasy world map that's even more fantastical. So I'm going to add a bunch of unique features like frozen lakes, corrupted battlefields, dangerous whirlpools, haunted forests, magical mist, and portals to alternate dimensions, all kinds of fun stuff. So I don't have a specific story in mind. I'm not illustrating a, a particular world. I'm just gonna be drawing a map that is crammed full of these unique, fantastical locations. So I always start my map making process not on the actual illustration, but on a scrap sheet of paper where I just figure out how I'm gonna draw each of the icons to represent these locations. You can see I've got a bunch of different icons on this sheet. Really, I just tried stuff out. Sometimes I got stuck and had to try again, but because all of these icons, all of these little drawings are so simple, it doesn't take long to just try again if it, if it doesn't quite look right. Really, it's fun just breaking each of these icons down into simple steps. It makes it easy to repeat them over and over again, like, uh, a tree might just be a few lines, but once you draw multiple of these willow trees on the map, you'll get an entire forest, or a field of magical crystals, snow-capped mountain range, or a jungle filled with giant spider webs. As you can see here, I've penciled out the map of the witch marches. It's a totally made up land to, to show off all of these crazy terrain types. So each month on my Patreon, I make a new zine, and this month, January zine, will feature this map. It's the, the example map for Flix Silver Pin's guide to making maps more fantastical. And this is the sequel to Flix Silver Pin's guide to making maps, which is a step-by-step -step guidebook on how to draw fantasy maps. The new zine is gonna be all of these instructions for even more fantastical locations to drop in and draw and add a lot of variety to your world maps. If you check out the first link down in the description, it'll take you to my Patreon. If you sign up in the month of January, you'll get Flick Silver Pin's guide to making maps more fantastical. It's a mouthful of a title. The zine will be available at the end of the month. You can sign up for a digital tier where you'll just get the PDF at the end of the month, or you can sign up for a physical tier where I will mail you the zine just like this one as soon as I get it back from the printer. Either way, you'll get immediate access to the digital version of the Making Maps zines. So if these videos aren't enough, you'll be able to jump right in and, and start making world maps with no experience necessary. All right, so I'm inking this map up. I'm using a variety of Pigma Micron sizes and I'm drawing on smooth Bristol board. I'll have links to all of the, the tools that I use down in the description. I started with the border, adding the, the thick outline and the zigzag pattern. You know, one day I will fully illustrate an awesome looking border, but I really wanted this map to, to have the location shine and not get outclassed by some, some crazy border. I like to ink in the location names on my maps first because I think it's way easier to draw around letters and labels than it is to try and squeeze the, the labels in between some drawings that you might have done over top. With the lettering, I really try and keep it neat, keep the letters all the same size and, and space. And even though these labels are simple, I really like to, to think about lettering as if I'm drawing the letters, not just writing the letters. That might not seem like there is much of a distinction there, but if you try it out, if you, if you you know, draw some letters instead of just writing some letters, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Okay, now I'm filling in this map. I'm starting at the top and working my way down, repeating all of these unique icons as I go. And even though I really planned out this map in pencil, I'm really taking my time and making sure all of my ink lines are nice and smooth and consistent. I'm using a slightly thicker pen for the stuff like the mountains and the coastlines where I want a little bit of a thicker line to, to differentiate the locations. Then I'll go a little bit thinner for most of the map and then whenever there's little tiny details, I'll use an even smaller, thinner pin to make sure I can handle the, the really tiny stuff. And really, I just wanna show you that you can totally draw cool maps without having crazy drawing abilities. As I go through each of these locations, you'll see just how super simple they are. You know, a, a glacier is represented by a bunch of zigzag lines. Snowy trees are just 
three little W shapes with their tops connected and a single line for a trunk underneath. You know, a lake can be a circular squiggle, but you can make it frozen by adding some diagonal lines, or you can make it a sulfuric lake by by adding some, some wavy lines and a bunch of dark circles. Have fun coming up with a bunch of different types of trees to make a bunch of different types of forests. A desert can be a, a bunch of dots, or you can add uh, the, the typical cactus or some weird flowery cactuses. My hope is you can follow along with this video and learn how to draw each of these icons as, as I'm illustrating them. If you need to slow down the, the speed of the video, rewind a bunch of times, go for it. You can absolutely draw cool looking maps like this. Even the more complex features on this map are not that hard to draw. You can see how each one is made up of very simple lines, some, some straight lines, some curved lines. You know, you can take the, the buildings, for example. Doors are just arches. Windows are little dashes. And the outer wall and roof shapes are just a, a combo of squares and triangles or, or maybe a half circle. It's nothing fancy, but you can get a ton of variety by making different combinations of these really simple shapes and lines. Don't forget that it's a fantasy world, so the geography does not matter. It doesn't need to be logical. You can totally have a, a desert right across a canyon from a, a frozen lake and a bunch of snowy mountains. Actually, that super exists in real life, so maybe a bad example. You know what I'm saying, though. You can get crazy with it. You don't have to be stuck on the, the most logical real-life kind of thing, especially if you're drawing a bunch of giant corrupted spores or a tower coming out of a, a spore spinning whirlpool. Remember, we're not trying to draw a, a totally realistic map here. These icons are really just meant to represent a location. You know, we're just trying to make a cool looking drawing that, that sparks our imagination and gets us excited to explore this world. Now, if following the video isn't working for you, definitely check out my Patreon. Like I said, you'll get instant access to the, the Making Maps zine and this Making Maps more fantastical zine at the end of the month. And I just want you to know that drawing maps is so much fun because you can create an entire world with just a few simple icons. And hopefully this map shows you you can get even more creative with your own maps. You know, it doesn't just have to be the, the standard mountains and forests and rivers. You can really easily make a, a bunch of weird round mountains or dangerous canyons and volcanoes with rivers of lava. You can have fields of ice shards and, and giant walls blocking ever-ranging fire. You can create a, a jungle of giant thorns, haunted forests with summoning circles, wizard prisons in the middle of whirlpools, and all kinds of strange towns and cities to visit. Let me know what you think of the Witch Marches map down in the comments. You can support the channel and get a ton of guidebooks and adventures and tabletop role-playing games by joining my Patreon or checking out my online shop. All of it is linked down in the description. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!